Hey y'all, welcome, welcome back. So for today's video, we're gonna be taking a look at the history of Raggedy Ann dolls as a part of a series that I do very infrequently on this channel where I like do little kind of informational videos about historical or cultural dolls. I'm someone who is very interested in learning in general and especially I like history and I like learning about other places. And so this series is a fun way for me to kind of incorporate my interest in history and my interest in dolls. It's not something that I do like super, super often just because it is a very niche thing to be doing and I feel like most people who are watching tend to watch for more current content about dolls that are coming out now. So not something that I do a lot of the time but sometimes I just have to indulge myself and today is one of those days. So like I said we are going to be taking a look at the history of Raggedy Ann dolls. Really quick side note just because it's like bothering me. This has absolutely nothing to do with the topic at hand, but I'm trying to grow my hair out and I feel like it's in that stage where just no matter what I do, it doesn't look how I want it to look. So if I look a complete mess this video, I'm sorry. I, it's really, really bothering me. I spent like 15 minutes trying to get my hair to do something that I would feel like good about on camera and it didn't happen. So just, you know, sorry. <laughs> but actually talking about what we should be talking about, just like with my other videos of this nature. I'm not by any means trying to do like a complete deep dive into Raggedy Ann. More so I think this is a fun way to kind of hit the highlights of the history of a particular sort of doll and kind of make a video that's very easily digestible so you can get not like surface level information, I feel like that's not quite what I mean, but it's not in depth, it's not literally everything you could possibly know. It's just like a quick fun little video to get you started and I do always have my sources in the description box down below so if you guys wanted to use those as a stepping stone to do more research of your own, you are absolutely welcome to do that. But this is just meant to be like a kind of fun and like I said easily digestible version of the history of Raggedy Ann in this case. This one is going to be a bit interesting because if my memory serves me correctly, all of the other videos that I've done in this series have been about dolls that are significantly older. Like some of them are still around today, but they originated a lot longer ago than Raggedy Ann. So she's like my most modern doll that I've done, which is a bit different, but hopefully still very interesting for those of you who do like this sort of video. Segwaying neatly into my little self promo there. If you do like the video, if you could give it a like, that's super helpful to me. And then if you're new here and you enjoy your time, definitely subscribe so you can see more. But with all of that out of the way, let's go ahead and actually start talking about Raggedy Ann. Raggedy Ann is an American doll that was invented by John Barton Gruel, I hope I'm saying that correctly, who was an illustrator slash cartoonist slash author. Officially, Raggedy Ann was invented in 1915 in the sense that that's when Gruel received the patent for her. That's the best time frame I can really offer you because there are several different versions of kind of the Raggedy Ann origin story, so the patent for me is the best way to address her beginnings with any sort of certainty there. I do think it's really interesting that, like I said, Raggedy Ann is the most modern doll that I've covered in this series, but there's still some mystery to like her origin story. Obviously it makes sense with the case of like the Roman ivory dolls that were hundreds and hundreds of years ago. That makes sense where some information would be incomplete or there'd be some speculation there. But it's really funny to me that a doll that was made within the last 150 years would also have that same like bit of mystery to their origin. Since we don't know for sure the details of how Gorel came up with the idea for Raggedy Ann, we will go over all of the legends surrounding how she came to be. One popular explanation is that Gorel's daughter, Marcella, found a faceless ragdoll in her grandmother's attic and Gorel drew a face on it, creating what was essentially a Raggedy Ann prototype. A very similar story states that it was Gruel who found the faceless ragdoll in his mother's house before his daughter was even born, and it was something that he gave to her later. And a third and final version of the Raggedy Ann origin story is that Gruel created the doll after his daughter passed away. Marcella tragically died at the very young age of 13 after contracting diphtheria from a contaminated needle while getting smallpox vaccinations at her school. This explanation says that Raggedy Ann was almost created as sort of a memorial for Marcella. No matter what the truth is, what cannot be argued is that it was Gruel who was the brains behind Raggedy Ann, and he definitely found great success in marketing her. Allegedly, he named the doll by combining words from two of James Whitcomb Riley's poems, The Raggedy Man and Little Orphan Annie. Riley was a family friend, so Gruel sort of paid him homage by naming his doll Raggedy Ann. This is generally accepted to be true. I'm only saying allegedly to cover my bases because of the fact that a lot of the rest of Raggedy Ann's history is up for debate, so like, just to be on the safe side there. The doll was first mass-produced 
in 1918 and was a big hit. The doll itself was accompanied by books written by Gruel about her escapades, and later on the novels would also introduce many other characters, maybe most famously Raggedy Andy, who was Raggedy Ann's little brother. Gruel was a very prolific writer, releasing a new Raggedy Ann story as often as once a year, which is extremely impressive to me. The books focused on the concept of Raggedy Ann and other doll characters having adventures out of sight of real people, kind of like the concept of Toy Story. I know that Raggedy Ann was probably not the first one to come up with this idea. Toy Story definitely wasn't. It's not like an unpopular popular theme when it comes to toys, but I just thought it was kind of interesting. Something quite notable about Raggedy Ann is how little her design has changed over the years. The earliest mass-produced Raggedy Ann dolls featured sewn-on button eyes and a triangle nose on their face. They were made of muslin, stuffed with cotton batting, and had a cardboard heart sewn into the body, and they also had brown yarn hair. Nowadays, the doll still has her signature triangle nose, typically has safety eyes, just obviously for safety, it's in the name, and has bright red yarn hair. There have obviously been some changes through the years to the outfits the Raggedy Ann wore, as well as the overall style of her face and makeup, but for a doll that is over 100 years old in design and who has been produced by many, many companies over the years, to me it's really striking how much Raggedy Ann has managed to stay the same. One factoid that I found particularly heartwarming was that Raggedy Ann had officially licensed sewing patterns through McCall's. This meant that people could hand make their own dolls at home instead of purchasing the mass manufactured version if they preferred. Of course, people could do this before the patterns, either by copying the design of Raggedy Ann directly, or just making ragdolls that were not like Raggedy Ann ragdolls, but just their own ragdolls. But I did think it was really cool that the brand had officially licensed patterns so that if you wanted to use that, you could. Another standout feature you might call it of Raggedy Ann is how her unassuming design and smiling face actually hides a lot of controversy. Like, a surprising amount of controversy. The first bit I want to cover involves the character of beloved Belindy. Trigger warning here for stereotypes and harmful depictions of black people. Sadly, yep, that's the direction we're going in. So beloved Belindy was a character within the Raggedy Ann books who was a mammy. And even just saying that word makes me feel really gross. I don't like it at all. The stereotype there was the idea of a black woman who was kind of a mother figure and would do household chores and take care of white children. And this depiction is directly derived from the fact that enslaved black women often had this role in the times of American slavery. Like they typically would work in the house with cooking and cleaning and taking care of white children. So obviously this is extremely harmful and like, not good to be seeing in the books. As a character, Beloved Belindy was introduced in the 1920s and I think the best way to sum it up is yikes. I'm not showing any images because the way that she was designed in the novels was basically just a drawn doll version of how black people were represented in minstrel shows, which is again, not good and very harmful. So while I do think that it's important when discussing the history of Raggedy Ann to bring this up, I really don't wanna be spreading those sorts of images around. From what I found, it wasn't until 1994 that Raggedy Ann officially came out with a proper African-American version of the doll that was just a regular Raggedy Ann doll with darker skin and darker hair instead of being a doll that was rooted in like harmful stereotypes and caricatures. And that is just the beginning of how Raggedy Ann has been connected to less than wholesome things throughout the years. The next iteration on this sad list that we're going down is the fact that she actually was a symbol for anti-vaccination groups for a while. This goes back to one of the versions of the doll's origin story. You might have noticed that I was careful to say that Marcella, Gruel's daughter, passed away from diphtheria from a contaminated needle. So what happened was that she was getting a smallpox vaccine at her school, but when the vaccine was being administered, they weren't using an individual needle for each different child. They were just using the same needle over and over and over again. So by the time Marcella got it, the needle was contaminated and she got diphtheria and that is what she died from. That's what happened, but that is not what everyone took from it. <laughs> Some anti-vaxxers either misunderstood or intentionally misconstrued the circumstances of Marcella's death and claimed that she had become ill and passed away as a result of the smallpox vaccine itself. Again, to reiterate, it was not the vaccine, it was the contaminated needle, but they said that it was the vaccine to spread fear surrounding anyone getting vaccines. Therefore, they adopted Raggedy Ann as a sort of symbol of Marcella and as a symbol of someone who died from a vaccination, which is just very grim. And again, it's not what actually happened, but the facts in this case did not stop the doll from being used to spread that fear about vaccinations. And then to round out Raggedy Ann's more sinister history, I would be completely remiss in creating this video if I didn't talk about Ann 
Annabelle. I don't want to do a full deep dive into Annabelle just because that's not the topic of this video. Like I am talking about Raggedy Ann and not Annabelle specifically, but the short version of the story is that that is the name given to a Raggedy Ann doll that was, according to some spiritualists and also paranormal researchers Ed and Lorraine Warren, full of bad demonic energy. This doll was apparently the source of hauntings for multiple people and potentially even the source of actual violence. The Raggedy Ann doll in question now resides in the occult museum. I will leave it up to you guys whether you believe that that doll is haunted or even that haunting in general exists. But regardless of your personal thoughts, Raggedy Ann has definitely obtained some degree of infamy through the existence of the Annabelle doll. I do find it really interesting that Raggedy Ann does seem to have more than the normal amount of negative connotations attached to her. Like, I could see why people find the doll creepy. I don't think in the modern day she really looks super terrifying. Some of the older ones, I can kind of get it. I wouldn't call myself like a Raggedy Ann fan. I wouldn't buy one of the dolls, but I just don't know that she like deserves the reputation she has in the sense that I'm kind of personifying the doll here. I don't know why, but like this is just how my emotions were going while doing the research for this video. Like, it's not the doll's fault that anti-vaxxers decided that she was a good symbol, right? It's not the doll's fault that the author made racist caricatures of black people. It's very much his fault, like the author's fault. But, I don't know, I just, for some reason I feel, through the course of having done this research, I feel a little bit bad for Raggedy Ann as a doll. I don't know if that makes sense. But yeah, it's just fascinating to me that a doll that is like so relatively innocent would end up being the source of so many negative connotations. It's especially funny to me because nowadays some people online will decry Monster High dolls, for example, and talk about how they are sinful and evil. But as far as I know, there's no Monster High doll in the occult museum. Obviously, that's not to say that Monster High is inherently any more sinful or demonic or anything like that than a Raggedy Ann doll or any other doll for that matter. It's more just like a critique on how appearance does not tell the whole story. So on that weirdly philosophical note there that it's going to round out today's video on the history of Raggedy Ann. Despite a lot of her history that we covered today being kind of on the dark side, she's still going strong today and honestly I love that for her. I hope that her future is less full of those negative connotations and I hope that in the future she can have like just some more wholesome moments. Again, I don't know why I'm like weirdly feeling sympathy for this doll. Like, it doesn't make sense. And again, I'm not even a fan. Like, I don't even want a Raggedy Ann doll. I don't know. I just feel like sometimes people do terrible things and it makes me sad to see any doll. It's just in this case, it's a Raggedy Ann doll being used as like a symbol for the terrible things that people do. Again, getting weirdly heavy there, so I'm sorry. <laughs> but yeah, those are just my thoughts for today. I would love to hear your thoughts on like the odd deep note that I hit there. And also just know if you guys learned anything new this video or if you were already aware of all of this Raggedy Ann history, I would just be very curious to talk about you guys with it in the comments down below. As always with this series of videos, I know I don't do it super frequently, so like if you suggest a video, it might take a while for me to get to it, but I have a list of other historical and cultural dolls that I want to make videos on. So if you want me to add anything to that list, definitely drop your suggestions in the comments there. I would be very happy to, you know, get to them eventually. It's not that I don't want to make these videos more often but like I said earlier it's just not something that like the majority of y'all are interested in and so I don't want to make videos that are boring I just sometimes I can't resist <laughs> so I do hope you guys were able to enjoy the video today as always along with the sources in the description box I also have my PO box my Amazon wish list and then my Instagram and TikTok so if you want to support me in other ways you can check those things out but yeah I hope you guys have a lovely rest of your day or your night or whatever it might be and I will catch you in the next one bye guys